So Valve has released the Steam Hardware Survey upon the world. They've given a way for us hardware enthusiasts to weigh and measure ourselves, to see if we are actually worthy of VR. And it's left some of us kind of wanting. How it runs this test is it does the Portal VR demo where it just expands a little machine and you have to try to look at it and whatnot, but it just has a static camera that moves around. When it's done, it will serve you your results, whether or not you are ready, capable, or not ready. TunnelBear is the easy to use VPN service that lets you use the web as if you're in 20 different countries. Learn more and try TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description. So, yeah, it's spoiler alert, not that good looking. Only 9.4% of people have actually made it through. Ugh. If you look down below that, it will tell you the results. The results will tell you how to upgrade your system in order to become ready. If you expand lower than that, it will tell you how many frames were encoded, how many frames were above 90 FPS, which is extremely important considering VR screens are usually 90 Hertz plus. It will tell you how many frames were dropped by your CPU and the average fidelity of the scene or the graphical quality that it was able to accomplish while running through the entire scene. So, yeah. 9.4% of people, actually slightly lower than that, are ready based on the Steam hardware survey. So get wrecked, I guess. We've been saying this for a long time on Linus Tech Tips. The hardware community is not actually up there enough for VR. People complain about the cost of headsets, but their computers aren't even ready. But let's take a sec and actually analyze where those numbers came from. The Steam hardware survey, is it up to snuff? The Steam Hardware Survey is a simple but very powerful tool. You submit your data to Valve, they total it, put percentages of how many people are running what on it and make it publicly available. Great, tons of people use it. We at Linus Media Group use it. We use it to quantify how many people are going for what card, what chip, what brand, whatever, and then discuss that in videos or the WAN show from time to time. It's a pretty interesting concept and I, we will continue to do that in the future. Another group of people that uses it, game devs. They use it to target what hardware they need to prepare their game for. Is it a very high end, very high fidelity game? Well, they probably need to target whatever the highest percentage of high end cards are. That kind of makes sense. It's a relatively simple concept, but does it make sense for VR? Does the hardware survey actually apply properly to VR? I would argue no, because there's too much garbage data. What is garbage data? Well, I for one fall in this category. I have probably about seven computers in the Steam hardware survey, but probably one of them, actually exactly one of them, is only intended for VR. None of the other ones will ever probably do anything in the VR space. They're there to play stuff like Papers, Please, or Minecraft, or Counter-Strike, or Team Fortress, and those rigs should not be in a percentage system in order to figure out the amount of computers ready for VR. I understand that's not what the Steam hardware survey is, but that's where the 9.4% came from, and people have been saying for a long time, including me, that the community isn't ready. <laughs> To get an accurate representation of the gaming community's readiness for VR, you need a lot of data. To get a lot of this data, you need a lot of people, and you need a lot of hardware. I'm only one man, so I don't fix that category, but I do have a bunch of hardware. There's a problem there as well, though. I have a bunch of bleeding edge current generation hardware. I don't have the interesting bits, like the i5-2500 and the GTX 680, which sold a bunch and might actually still be able to skim by into that ready category. That's interesting. I want to figure out what is just going to be able to make it. Here we specialize in things like $30,000 computers and computers that fit into bombs. They're fun, but they don't really matter a ton in this data set. I don't need to reaffirm that really expensive, really overbuilt, modern, current generation gaming hardware is able to run VR. We get that. It's the more interesting data that I'm looking for. This is where you come in. We need the community to come together and make a massively collaborative benchmarking project so we can see where the enthusiast community is sitting in terms of VR performance. We can do this on the forum, the Linus Tech Tips community forum. Jumper118 has already done something similar with Cinebench. He has an awesome thread with over 500 submissions of people's Cinebench scores. That's super cool. I've used those results in videos in the past before, and I'm not looking to sell this data before anyone in the comments freaks out. 
This is all publicly available stuff. We're not selling it. I just want to host it online at techtips.com for them because it's easy. So yeah, please submit your test results there. We can see how our community is ready for VR because I'm pretty sure it's higher than 9.4%. So don't worry if you have a low end rig, if you're running multiple cards, whatever it happens to be, if you're remotely interested in VR or high end gaming at all, submit your rig and let's figure it out. Crunchyroll is a site created by anime fans for anime fans. They offer the most current episodes of new shows straight from Japan, like Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans, and Erased. They also have a large collection of the most popular anime series, like, say, Naruto or One Piece. And all of the content on their site is professionally subtitled. Head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus, and you can sign up for a 30-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium. If you enjoy the many benefits of premium, like 1080p streaming, getting new episodes of shows straight from Japan within an hour of their premiere, and being able to stream anywhere, anytime on a variety of devices like your phone, tablet, game console, computer, whatever, you can continue your Crunchyroll premium membership for only $6.95 per month. So head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus and check them out. Thanks for watching guys. Like the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Don't forget to go on the forum and submit your test results. I'm really interested what the result of this whole project is going to be. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to use our Amazon affiliate code to buy cool things on Amazon. Become a contributor at the LinusTechTips.com forum while you're there submitting your test results. And you can buy a cool t-shirt from us down in the description down below. Anyways, if you want to see another cool video, check up here. Another mystery video. I think these should all kind of be mystery videos, to be honest. But anyways, click out.